an historic moment for NASCAR, the next generation or Gen 7 Cup car made its competition debut in the showpiece season opener, the Daytona 500. I think the, the biggest thing that the, that the fans will probably notice is the relevance to how the car looks compared to a, a showroom car, especially for us, our Mustangs look very relevant to the cars on the showroom floors. And I think that was the highest priority to make the cars squared up and, and relevant to a street car. With a base configuration of 670 horsepower, a four inch rear spoiler and more efficient aerodynamics, the next gen car though is a genuine racer. The whole entire underwing, is, is, the underbody of the car is planed off. There's a diffuser now that we have in the back that generates most of the downforce on the car. And then the spoiler is the same and some of the properties are the same. We have a splitter that's bolted into the underwing. So the underbody arrow is probably the biggest arrow difference. You never know who's going to hit it good right out of the gate. You know, which team's going to have the car figured out. The little things that make a difference, but at the same time, I think the package that NASCAR has chosen with higher horsepower and lower downforce, I think it's going to put it in the driver's hands a lot more. Most tracks this year, we're going to be running 670 horsepower where we were 550 horsepower. So that'll make for the drivers having to lift, drive the cars, they're going to be slip sliding around with the more horsepower and the lower downforce. With road courses featuring prominently on the calendar, the new car acquired a more balanced geometry. Our cars used to in the past be offset and they were more designed to go just left hand only. Now these cars are more symmetrical, the body on it is symmetrical, the suspension is symmetrical. Because of that it is more specifically designed to go left and right, which suits it very well for road racing and maybe not as well for oval track racing. 18 inch aluminium wheels and new rack and pinion steering have also changed the feel of the car. The steering's definitely different. You know, in the garage, you're turning the thing two, three turns all the way around, but then you get on the racetrack, and once you're up to speed, it's the tiniest movements. It's so quick and so sensitive. The steering went from a steering box and a control idle arm setup to a rack and pinion setup, so that's been a big adjustment uh, for us. It has a lot quicker response and, you know, quickness to the steering that the drivers have to get used to. The 2022 Cup car has meant a reset for both drivers and engineers adjusting to the five-speed sequential gear shift and transaxle independent rear suspension. We've always had a differential rear axle housing and a differential all combined in one. Well, transaxle has the transmission and the rear end combined together, and it's in the back of the car. And with the gear shift, we've always had the four-speed H pattern, and, and now we're a five-speed sequential shifter. So especially in the road racing, even some short tracks, you may see people actually shifting during the races now. Whether it's ovals or road courses, the bigger wheels allow for larger, more powerful brakes. And we've already seen some aggressive racing. It's got much bigger brakes than what we used to have on the old car, so it stops way better. So the brake zones are way more compressed. So it is a little bit more thrilling of a car to drive on the road courses. On the ovals, there's still a lot of development that has to go in. The brakes on it are unbelievable. How we shift now, you can drive this car way harder than what we used to drive. But that window of being on the edge in the old car was this big. Well, now it's this big. But it's so much easier to get to that edge. But then once you go over it, there's no saving it. You're backed in the fence before you even know what happens. It has a plastic body on it now. So we're able to beat and bang a lot more and not have problems. Where in the past, you know, with a metal body, if you got into the wall just that little bit, pushing it and it got into the tire, you have a blown tire and you have to go to the pit. Even pit stops have seen changes. On pit road, the new Goodyear tires, the single lug nut wheel attachment and updated refueling system have required the whole team to adapt. This is a huge challenge to learn how to adapt to this new style race car with the next gen cars. I'm excited to have the last year of my career be in this next gen car because this car is going to be around for a while. So whatever I do next, whether it's involved still in the industry or not, at least I will be relevant and understand the dynamics of this car and what it races like.